Are you ready to start? Counting down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, City Clerk, can you read the preamble, please? This meeting is compliant with the Ralph M. Brown Act, as amended by California Assembly Bill Number 361, effective September 16th, 2021, providing for a public health emergency exception to the standard teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide a safe environment for the public staff and council members while allowing for public participation. Accordingly, the public may observe city council meetings and or address the council using remote public comment options or have the option to attend city council meetings in person. Please be advised that city council members may continue to participate in the meeting remotely. The council may take action on any item listed in the agenda. So address the council in person. The location is 50 Park Place, Brisbane Community Meeting Room. Masks are no longer required, but are highly recommended in accordance with the California Department of Health guidelines. To maintain public health and safety, please do not attend in person if you're experiencing symptoms associated with COVID-19 or respiratory illness. To address the city council on any item on or not on the posted agenda, fill out a request to speak form located in the community meeting room lobby and submit it to the city clerk. Remote participation. Members of the public may observe participate in the city council meetings by logging into the Zoom webinar. City council meetings can also be viewed live and or on demand via the city's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Brisbane CA or on Comcast channel 27. Archive videos can be replayed on the city's website, brisbaneca.org forward slash meetings. Please be advised that if there are technological difficulties, the meeting will nevertheless continue. The agenda materials may be viewed online at brisbaneca.org at least 24 hours prior to a special meeting and at least 72 hours prior to a regular meeting. Remote public comments. Meeting participants are encouraged to submit public comments in writing in advance of the meeting. Aside from commenting while in the Zoom webinar, the following email and text line will also be monitored during the meeting and public comments received will be noted for the record during oral communications one and two or during an item. Email ipadia at brisbaneca.org or text 628-219-2922. Join the Zoom webinar, zoom.us with the ID 9919362866 and the call-in number is 16699009128. If you need special assistance to participate in this meeting, please contact the city clerk at 415-508-2113. Notification in advance of the meeting will enable the city to make reasonable arrangements to ensure accessibility to this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be calling the meeting to order. The time is 7.32. And if you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we have roll call. Council Member Cunningham? Here. Council Member Lentz? Here. Council Member Mackin? Here. Council Member O'Connell? Here. And Mayor Davis? Here. Now we'll move to the adoption of the agenda. I'd like to propose closing in memory of Roy Perez, um, one of our livings at the liveaboards at the marina who passed away the other day. Um, does anyone else have any adjustments to the agenda they would like to propose? I do not. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Second that. Roll call, please. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Lentz. Aye. Council Member Mackin. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. And Mayor Davis. Aye. Now we'll move to awards and presentations. And for this evening, we have Napalo from HIP Housing, um, who is a board member here to present us with their 2023 calendars. Excellent. You hear me okay? 
Yes. All right. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, honorable Mayor, esteemed council members, as well as those remote. Uh, familiar face. It's been a while here. And I'm representing HIP Housing today as a board member, uh, recently elected to the board uh, to present the annual calendar. I'm a little late. January was a busy month. It was hard to get here. So here I am towards the end of February. I think everybody knows uh, HIP Housing, uh, one of the large nonprofits here operating in the county, promoting affordable housing, uh, roughly 50 years uh, in the county, doing some great work. Do you know what HIP stands for? It's an acronym, HIP? Mm. Human Investment Project. That's great. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of services beyond just affordable housing. And so I'm here not only to acknowledge the calendar, uh, which is a pretty cool piece of art. Uh, we have 12 young artists that uh, did their art in here and they put in uh, what home means to them. So pretty neat. Uh, we have them available for all city staff as well as community members. Uh, and there's also, you can pick up an additional one for five bucks. And I think that Ingrid has all the, all the extra in inventory, right? Um, yeah, so I just want to say uh, it's wonderful to be here, and we really appreciate the partnership with Brisbane and all the cities in the county of San Mateo that we work with, and just absolutely appreciate the promotion and support of HIP Housing. Um, if anybody in the community has any um, interest in hearing about more of our programs or anything, I'm happy to talk with folks, easy to get a hold of, and again, we just deeply appreciate the support. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Any questions for me? How should people contact you? Oh, that is a great question. I don't know if I want to give my phone number out. Okay. Well, uh, if maybe I'll give city clerk. maybe I'll give that to, to Ingrid. Yeah. yeah, if folks have an interest in talking about the programs, we are supporting uh, some families here in Brisbane. Uh, we have a lot of active um, participants in the county. For greater than um, 1,200. Uh, people are being supported right now uh, with affordable housing solutions, and we're looking to expand that footprint. Um, so really exciting work, and we definitely need it, um, as you all know, and um, just appreciate all the work you're doing to help in that regard. Thank yeah, you. Okay. you know, thank you so much, Napalo, yeah. for yeah. wanting to be on the board yeah. for HIP Housing. Yeah. I mean, they're a great organization. You know, I, I wish we had more people in town taking advantage of their program to, to share homes. We've got you opportunities. Know, yeah, yes. no, yeah. absolutely. Every city in San Mateo County has got uh, opportunities. It's oh, yeah. just kind of getting over that, you know, fear of, of, of sharing one's place. And, yep. um, but I know that HIP Housing does a great job of, of vetting, you know, potential mm -hmm. matches. Yep. And, um, you know, it provides a great opportunity for, for someone who's living alone to have companionship. And then for that person who's looking for an affordable place to live, you know, for them to have a place. So, the, yeah, just thank you so much Absolutely. for wanting to do that. I, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I was already, already a big fan of yours. <laughs> now even more so. Uh, and I'll do one additional plug because I think it would be pretty cool to have some young artists. Uh, kindergarten through fifth grade is eligibility. And we had um, many, many hundreds um, contributing to this. So I think it's a pretty good effort for the, the entire county. Uh, to see that sort of representation. And um, I enjoy the art in this. I think some of you do too. So I think I'll leave it there and wish you all well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Apollo. Yeah. Now we will proceed to oral communications number one. And first speaker is Michael Barnes. Um, City Clerk, if you could set the timer for two minutes. My name is Michael Barnes. I'm a Brisbane resident. The results of the first survey about recreation on Sierra Point have not been released. This survey was completed in late 2022. The city's consultant presented a bar chart of the results on the January 31st meeting, but we, the public, cannot see the raw data. It appears that the same number of respondents requested three different recreation items on Sierra Point. One, a park course or exercise stations. Two, a playground. And three, bicycle features. It is encouraging that the city has included yet another playground as an option for Sierra Point, even though Brisbane already has five public playgrounds for the toddler to seven-year-old age group. Likewise, it is good to see exercise stations for adults are an option for Sierra Point, even after they have also been approved as part of the Crocker Trail Master Plan. Adults also get a kayak ramp, volleyball courts, bocce ball courts on Sierra Point, which already have bocce ball courts. The city council direction that there will be no bicycle features included in the Sierra Point master plan illustrates another 
non-public policy decision and how arbitrary this is. Bicycling belongs everywhere and particularly on Sierra Point with its history as home to cyclocross races, including night races. The Sierra Point Bay Trail that connects Brisbane to South San Francisco is heavily used by bicyclists of all age groups, but particularly is important to children. This is because the streets are not as safe as they sh should be for bicyclists, including a few bicycle features along the side of Sierra Point Bay Trail, similar to the new DG running paths, will motivate bicyclists in the eight to 16 year old range to ride more as we saw at the community festival in 2021. While the city continues to plan for the recreational needs of the very young and adults, it does not provide adequately for the recreational needs of older children and teens. Sierra Point is an entirely artificial landmass with a highly urbanized environment. While watching plants grow may be appealing to some, you should also provide recreation for all of our children, which means active recreation for those who have outgrown the play structures. Please direct the consultant to include bicycle features in at least one of the options for Sierra Point and publicly release the results of the survey you asked the public to complete in late 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Kim Pauline. Good evening, city council members. Um, my name is Kim Pauline. I'm a Brisbane resident. And I'm here to ask you to reconsider the two minute time limit on public testimony and perhaps instead adjust it as needed based on number of speakers. The two, limit, or two minute time limit doesn't seem justified as you, rarely, oh, sorry, as you rarely have a lot of people attending your meetings, let alone planning to speak, unlike other larger cities like San Francisco. I've watched and attended many city council meetings they don't think the public testimony has really contributed to extending your meetings by a significant amount. As someone who usually spends time writing what I plan to say and timing myself, two minutes is really hard. Three minutes is usually possible. I think a city council member pointed out when this came up in a past meeting that you can speak multiple times if you need to exceed two minutes, but a speaker, if they haven't written down their testimony, can easily lose their train of thought. And this two, two minute time limit just um, seems really like a negative message to the public, thanks. Thank you. Do we have anyone else wishing to speak at this time? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, we will move on to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve items A through E? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Cunningham? Aye. Council Member Lentz? Aye. Council Member Mackin? Aye. Council Member O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Davis? Aye. We'll now move on to the public hearing, item F. Um, F or SP CRO, Sierra Point Commercial District Zoning Text Amendment 2022 RZ 4. Zoning text amendment to Title 17, Chapter 17.18 of the Brisbane Municipal Code to update existing research and development use provisions and performance standards and finding that this project is exempt from environment review under CEQA guidelines, Section 15183A. Staff report, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor and City Council. This agenda item is to consider an update to the research and development use provisions contained in the Sierra Point Commercial District zoning regulations. By way of background, in 2008, City Council adopted zoning provision, provisions allowing for research and development or R&D uses in the district. With regards to animals, the ordinance provisions permitted by right R&D using live insects, rodents, rabbits, fish, and amphibians. It prohibited the use of live dogs, cats, and primates. Use of other animals that were not named are subject to a conditional use permit. So essentially, currently, R&D use using most animal species are subject to conditional use permits. Additionally, City, City Council is the approving authority instead of the Planning Commission for R&D use permits. The Planning Commission is the authority for all other use permits in Brisbane with applications only going to council on appeal. 
There are no findings specific to R&D uses in the municipal code, but rather the standing, standard use permits findings apply. Last year, Bristol Myers Squibb applied for a use permit to conduct R&D using mini pigs at 1400 Sierra Point Parkway. And that has been the only R&D use permit application filed to date. That application was heard by city council, but ultimately it was withdrawn by the applicant before a decision was made. City Council then directed staff to initiate a zoning code amendment to consider updates to the live animals testing provisions. Also an ad hoc council subcommittee met in the fall and suggested prohibiting the use of all animals, except those that are expressly permitted under the ordinance. That would eliminate the category of conditional use permits for animals. The subcommittee also suggested re removal of rabbits from the permitted list. The Planning Commission then held a public hearing last month to consider draft amendments and to provide a recommendation to council. Those are provided in the draft ordinance, which you have before you. In summary, the draft ordinance would do the following. First, it would eliminate the conditional use permit category of R&D using live animals. Thus, R&D using specifically named live animal groups would be permitted by right, and use of all other animals would be prohibited. Second, rabbits would be prohibited from R&D uses. Third, the permitted by right category would be expanded beyond insects to include the larger category of invertebrates, so not just insects. And invertebrates are, of course, those without a backbone. Um, such as spiders, worms, and mollusks, others. Permitted uses would also be expanded from amphibians to also include reptiles. Those are the animal testing amendments that were proposed under the draft ordinance. And additionally, aside from the issue of permits for animal testing, use permits for R&D utilizing biological agents exceeding National Institute of Health risk group three would still be required. So that would be unchanged, except the approving authority would be the planning commission instead of city council. Council would still be the final authority if a planning commission decision was appealed, as is the process for all other types of use permits. And finally, an organizational cleanup of the performance standard provisions was included in the draft ordinance. As I mentioned last month, the Planning Commission held a public hearing and considered the draft ordinance. And following that hearing, they provided a recommendation to deny the proposed ordinance by a vote of three to one. A summary of the Planning Commission's discussion was provided in the draft minutes, which was included in the council's report. So I, I won't go into that, but uh, council has a few options with this application. Uh, council may vote to deny the zoning text amendment, thereby affirming the Planning Commission's recommendation that would keep the existing R&D provisions for CR Point unchanged. Alternatively, Council may reject the Commission's recommendation and adopt the zoning text amendment as proposed. Or finally, Council may adopt an amendment that is different from what's been provided in this case, depending on council's direction, staff may need to bring a revised ordinance back to you for consideration. So in closing, staff awaits direction from city council following tonight's public hearing. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Council member Mackin, please go first. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ken. I have a question. Um, you had a couple different versions as attachments. Under attachment number two, the red line version, I'm looking at what was uh, written in the staff report as page 48. There's a 17.18.035, conditional uses, research and development. So everything under that particular section have been red lined out but it does not necessarily just pertain to conditional uses. There are sections in here about risk analysis that I think would apply. 
So is there a reason why these were all stricken? So the, the risk analysis would, would still be required and that would be essentially to, to look at whether the, the trigger for the risk group number three would be exceeded and, and, and trigger essentially um, a conditional use permit. So the conditional use permit would still apply to anything over a risk group three. Is there a reason why we don't include a risk group four? So this is essentially a carryover from the original ordinance in 2008. So it doesn't, it doesn't change the, the risk group. Um, essentially risk group four is the point at which there is a, a community concern versus uh, risk group Three is a more of an individual risk to a person that's exposed and and um, and could be treated. Whereas, so that threshold between three and four is the difference between a, a high community risk and not a high community risk. So, essentially, that's a continuation of the ordinance, but so a reorganization. So we don't have risk group four simply because it wasn't contained on the prior iteration of this particular ordinance. Well, risk group four would be subject to a use permit, either under the current ordinance or any other provisions. So if such a use were to be proposed, it would require a use permit process. Okay, so I, I'm still not clear. The items that are under 17.18.035, are they contained somewhere else in this ordinance, even if they're not under conditional uses? Yes, yes, it's it's been moved up into the conditional use category above it. So it's it's been essentially grouped together with the other conditional uses. So it would appear under 17.18.030? That's correct, as F. Okay. The red line version. The, okay, so because it, it's not on the red line version. So whatever is stricken out really should appear under 17.18.030. Am I correct? Um, yes, it shows up on my version. I'm not sure why it's right. not on yours, but. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are you done with your questions? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, Council Member O'Connell, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions at this time, thank you. Council Member Lenz. All right, thank you. Um, so um, if we can go to page 53, I think it is. Um, in regards to the Planning Commission's uh, minutes. I know that you mentioned in the discussion that uh, part of the reason why it was a 3-1 decision was because they felt that the scientific community was best um, suited to, to provide you know, particular um, you know, guidelines to animal testing. But one of the other things that, that they uh, have in here, is, it says um, it, was, it was expressed that prohibitions on animal testing would simply push R&D companies to other cities while Brisbane residents would still benefit from such R&D testing. So was there any um, feedback from the biotech uh, industry in regards to um, ha having some discussion or having some influence on on uh, what we are proposing. A couple of community members that, that are tied to biotech spoke, but not anything formally from the biotech companies that are operating out there. Okay, and um, I mean, we have quite a few biotech companies out at Sarah Point. Um, was there any outreach to them, you know, like we have, uh, you know, when there is a project, you know, in the neighborhood, you know, people around the neighborhood get a notice. 
So did we uh, notify the companies um, regarding we, this? We did. We did both a, a earlier outreach just to give them a heads up in, in the form of a letter as well as the usual um, notice of public hearing. Okay. Um, let's see. So, you know, our city is not the only city that allows biotech. Um, you know, we have our neighbor to the south and of course, north in San Francisco. So uh, I'm, I'm curious, what are the guidelines that these other cities have in regards to animal testing? So I, I looked specifically at South San Francisco being very close and, and being essentially a biotech hub. And, mm -hmm. and I, did, I did not find any um, exclusions on animal testing. It was their, their um, uses were either permitted or not permitted. Okay. So there was not that nuance of conditional use permit. Okay. And then, um, Clay, I, I, I'm going to have you put on your your, uh, your memory cap here. You know, go back to 2008, <laughs> if possible. I don't know, John, were you on? Yeah, okay, so. Uh, the, the memory cap doesn't the, work so well these days, so I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at the time I was on the planning commission, but this, you know, particular, you know, uh, situation you know with animal testing that that really wasn't discussed by us because i don't remember so my memory cap maybe is not so good but i know that the the council at the time you know was was wrestling with this and trying to find a a, a balance and 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 um if you can just kind of give some some something that you remember like you know how they were working with the community to find kind of this this approach of, of some animals being prohibited, some being allowed, and then why other animals not on the list, you know, to have some kind of conditional uh, use. Well, we're, we're fortunate because we have a member of the audience who was on the city council at the time. <laughs> so I'm, I, I, I will, uh, he, he, he can check my memory because um, uh, I, I do recall council member Barnes being very involved in this issue at that time. Um, so we, at that time, we did not allow for any animal testing, as I recall, and uh, what we were putting together was a, uh, an ordinance that would, uh, would, would provide some, uh, um, some um, ability to do that and also um, some uh, exception in terms of how people could apply for um, the larger animals. Um, and um, uh, that was basically the the, the compromise that was brought forward and it was decided by the council at that time that it would be best decided at the council level as opposed to having a um, process through the planning commission. So as I recall, that was the, uh, uh, the reason um, for that. Um, we did have um, at that time, um, I believe it was, um, was it healthcare partners? I mean, the, the predecessor to health peak um, mm -hmm. was, uh, was the company that was looking at the, uh, of what is now called the shore um, and they were um, working with the city on a development agreement and they wanted to uh, um, you know be able to um, market their product or pro project as a as a life science project so that was part of the impetus to um, to look at doing that okay so maybe we didn't receive any feedback from the biotech community now but we did receive it back in 2008 and they helped uh, provide some guidance of what they felt that they could you know that they felt that was appropriate in order to bring biotech companies to Sierra Point yeah I mean they, they, a developer, right? they, they were definitely involved um, and um, as I recall there was a fairly robust community group uh, people who lived in Brisbane and worked in um, various uh, fields in medicine and life science and stuff that were also very involved. So there was there was a lot of community discussion at that time about about the ordinance that was put together. Okay, great. No, thank you for providing some historical perspective. Um, I think I got that right. Okay, and, and and so you know in the staff report, you know it talks about this the 
the FDA Modernization Act 2.0, and, and that was just passed by Congress just a couple of months ago. So it's a brand new thing. Um, you know, it says that it, it, it removes the requirement to use animal testing in drug development, allows drug companies the option of using non-clinical tests instead of tests on animals when making new drug submissions to the uh, US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. So basically this is saying that, okay, in, I guess in some situations, probably not all, um, that you know the companies can go one route for the testing in order to submit it to the FDA, or they can use say traditional animal testing that they've done in, in the past. Is, is that- That's, that's right? my understanding of it, yes. Uh, okay. And, and, and you, you state here that the FDA uh, doesn't say that, that you can't test on animals. It's the, Correct. Okay. Um, all right. Th those are the only questions I have right now. Thank you. Council Member Cunningham, any questions? I have one question. Did we receive any negative feedback from all of our biotech companies? relative to the city council wanting to move ahead with this? We have not received a correspondence from biotech companies. Thank you. This. Okay, so did you just sent a letter through the mail. Did you guys send emails or make phone calls or anything? Just through the mail. What about at the subcommittee level was like Bristol Myers Squibb invited to attend any subcommittee meetings to give input since, you know, they were somebody who experienced this ordinance already. No. So no, no biotech companies gave input at the subcommittee level when the suggestions were being crafted um, is my understanding from what you're saying. And then what about what about um, companies that have leased out at um, Genesis and at Health Peak, but maybe haven't moved in? Were those companies contacted to let them know that this was up for discussion? Uh, no, this the correspondence would have gone to the ownership of of those properties. Okay, so did you guys reach out to them, the developers Genesis and Health Peak, and then they would have right. disseminated that information? Correct. Did they respond to any contact from you? I did have a conversation with Health Peak representative Scott. Um, yeah, it wasn't Scott. It was um, Natalia. No, it was a, another gentleman um, okay. who works in the development side. Um, when he got the letter that Ken referenced, uh -huh. just wondering what the what the kind of parameters were and what the history was. So I gave him a little background on it uh, at that point. Okay. Do we know of anyone in Brisbane who's doing any by right according to what's on the books right now animal testing? I'm un, I'm unsure on the answer to that. My recollection is there may be somebody um, uh, rodent testing, but I'd have to double check that. I I'm not hundred percent. Because I think it would be important to know if we were going to let's say prohibit testing on rabbits, if there was somebody who was already testing on rabbits, maybe they missed that piece of mail, but that could really impact their whole business operation in Brisbane if suddenly they can no longer conduct their business. So I think getting an answer to that is really important. Well, there would be some issues with non-conforming rights. If somebody established a use under permitted ordinance, the ordinance changes. Again, the, the, the ability to continue a use um, does remain through non-conforming rights. Sure, uh, Michael could weigh in on that if he wishes, but. So that would be 
cover somebody who's operating under the current ordinance who whose use would no longer be allowed. So they would essentially be grandfathered in. Correct. Okay. And um, I know that there is something in here that adjusts cannabis research and development. Can you just give more information about that? Yes. So cannabis research and development is part of the definition section in the municipal code. And by and then it's acknowledged actually within this zoning district as as allowed as well. So the portion that addresses cannabis really gets to um, performance standards, referencing a, a whole nother chapter of the code. So we simply move that section down to the performance standards section as a, a cleanup item, but it wouldn't alter the what's allowed out there. That's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm that that was more of like a cleanup situation. Um, okay, that's the end of my questions. Does anyone else have any other questions before we open up the public hearing? No, no? okay. So I will open the public hearing at this time. And I will set the speaker time for this item to three minutes. Do we have, I see a slip here. Okay, our first speaker is Michael Barnes. Good evening again, my name is Michael Barnes. I'm a Brisbane resident. Uh, for some historical perspective, um, HCP at the time in 2008, I think, um, came to us and said that if animal testing was not allowed by right, then we probably would not get any biotech companies out there because no company wants to come before any body of the city and speak in favor of animal testing because it makes them a target for animal rights activists. Mm -hmm. And it is, and they'll be rejected. They'll, they won't get their, their use permit approved, which is exactly what happened here in Brisbane when they did come asking for a con conditional use. The city council tried to find a way to deny it, and then they got the message and they they pulled their application. So their their vision back in 2008 was correct. Here in 2022-2023, so I don't really think that much has changed. Um, I want to talk briefly about um, in vitro and in silico testing. I myself have developed several uh, biochemical and cell-based assays. That is a routine part of all chemical screen screening, all drug development always has in vitro and now in silico modeling as well. The in silico modeling is based on animal and human results. So when you're dealing with a novel drug, a brand new molecule that's never been investigated before, you're testing it in an, a computer model that has been generated based on different molecules. And the question is, do those previous molecules resemble the new molecule enough to predict the new molecule's behavior and reaction in an animal? And we don't know that. So I'm just saying I've used a lot of in silico programs. They help, but they are not perfect. Um, it's it's kind of a problem. Maybe, you know, I heard you say, Cliff, that there are two different routes you can go with this in silico modeling and in vitro testing. That's all done for all molecules now anyway. There is no other route. Everybody does that. The question is, what happens when you put it in an animal? And, you know, do we want to jump straight from modeling into human testing? And if that's the case, the people in phase one clinical trials are going to be at, at risk at this point. I just, it, that's a kind of a leap of faith. Unless the molecules you're testing have already been through human testing and you know they're going to be safe. Um, uh, rabbits have also, uh, I know that they're used in cardiovascular modeling, but they also have other uses. We were using them at a company I worked at several years ago in wound healing. Um, Yeah, everybody's using this. Uh, 
And I think that the reason why uh, South San Francisco probably does not have any restrictions on animal testing or any prohibitions is because they know that if a company comes to the city council or the planning commission, they're going to run into exactly what, um, who was it that came here? Bristol Myers. Bristol Myers we ran into here. They're going to ask, and then it's going to get more restrictive. So this is just, this is just the truth. This is just what happens. All right, thank you. Thank is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? I see no other hands raised, Madam Mayor. Okay. Do I have a first and second to close the public hearing? So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Cunningham? Aye. Council Member Lentz? Aye. Council Member Mackin? Aye. Council Member O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Davis? Aye. We'll now move on to council discussion. Is there anyone who would like to start? I will. Okay. Council Member Cunningham? I've made my notes in list format to keep myself on. Um, track here. So we've only had one application for testing on mini pigs, which was withdrawn by the applicant in on August 26th. That was just before October when the House easily passed the bill for the um, animal chat testing 2.0 change. Um, I don't know whether that was coincidence or what, but there you have it. And then on December uh, actually, when the House passed this bill, it was three quarters yes, a quarter no, which was pretty interesting. But what, then when it went to the Senate, the bill passed unanimously. Have we ever seen this sort of cooperation from the Democrats and the Republicans in the last 50 years in this country? I don't think so. So that brings a point. If, and I really mean if, the drug companies and the biotech did not want this bill and did not want this change. Do you not think they would have lobbied like all get out to stop it getting passed? You know that answer is yes. So why didn't they? They have been working on these changes. The first changes in 70 years in this area. They have been working on it for so long. They all came to an agreement. We did not hear any kind of lobbying from the largest biotech and the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. None, not one. It went through, it sailed through unanimously. So we have over 800,000 sentient animals used in animal testing outside of the rodents and whatever. I'm talking dogs, cats, pigs, chimpanzees in this country each year. About 80,000 of them are in California. So even by reducing the use of some animals because of this modernization act, we're helping a lot of different things. We've got environmental issues using animals in testing. We have a lot of money being made by people raising animals for animal testing and making huge profits doing that. And um, I can uh, make available to the city, the US Department of Agriculture report on this from 2019. The requirement for animal testing other than rodents is now firmly in the hands of the biotech and pharmaceutical companies. Now, for any of you who know MD, PhDs who work in biotech and the medical fields, they don't want to test on animals. They've been working for years trying to get away from it. So they have come to the firm conclusion that the accuracy of the science that they're putting forward is much more beneficial to the human beings for whom these drugs are being made. The efficacy of testing on human biology has proven to be far more efficacious than much of the animal testing. Pigs, for example, respond very differently to any kind of sedation. Um, anybody who knows veterinary science um, or any veterinarians will tell you pigs do not respond like, animal, like humans 
if you give them an anesthetic. It can be a very dangerous and unpredictable thing. So, you know, our biologies are just that much different. And the percentage of efficacy on heart medications has proven to be far more accurate using human tissue assays, organ on a chip, and other technologies than animal testing. Um, a lot of different studies came out of the top universities around the world that prove that. Um, less environmental damage, lower cost for drugs to market was another big reason that they wanted to go forward with this. They're not doing the animal testing, which is a laborious, long, long process. So it's going to, from a financial perspective, save billions of dollars to these companies. That's why they didn't complain. That's why this bill went through. Yes, we have all been grateful recipient of life-saving drugs. I am one of those people that in the past were required to be tested on animals prior to being allowed to be tested on humans and then to market. It is not going to end animal testing. It is going to reduce it. Over 200 biotech and pharmaceutical companies endorsed the bill and none of Big Pharma opposed it. I will provide those links as well. This is not about whether you like animal testing or not. This goes much, much deeper than that. It would be arrogant of us to ignore the factors and to take a step backwards in time by allowing mini pig testing in Brisbane. These animals were up to 300 pounds each. For those of us who studied the sciences and came out with science degrees 20, 30, and 40 years ago, we had no other options. We had to test on animals. I can't tell you how many animals I tested on, how many animals I had to cut up to get my degree. Finally, we've only had this one application and to add mini pigs for testing in Brisbane, and that application was withdrawn. So this is a step forward and not a step backward. That's my feeling on this topic. Thank you. Is there anyone who would like to go next? Council Member Lentz. All right. Um, I, I, I first have a question for staff. So I, I just want to be clear on the um, on the Modernization Act 2.0. So that is that act is allowing the pharmaceutical community, biotech community, an option of using one way of, of testing while also <coughs> providing uh, the ability to test with animals as well. So it's it's not like we're gonna eliminate one, we're gonna, and you're just gonna do this. It's like, oh, here's another option for you. And as um, Michael Barnes said, you know, many times it's, it's using both at the same time to achieve what your outcome is. is it, do I got that right? That's that's correct. It gives the option. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so it's just allowing more discretion, right? It's just giving those biotech companies more freedom in how they. Madam Mayor, may test. I add one more thing to this? Well, let's let, let's. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. <clears throat> I, I, because it discussion. sort of helps okay. answer that question. Okay. So the FDA required all drug companies to test on animals. Required before bringing a drug to human testing and then to market. That requirement has been removed. Okay. Right. Um, you know, t testing on animals is, can be an emotional, you know, uh, kind of an emotional dilemma, right? I mean, of course, when we when we eat animals, for some folks, that's also an emotional dilemma. For many, though, it's it's not. Um, when we take a drug that was tested, the you know that had animal testing to to get it to market, we don't really think about it. But when we're here uh, making a decision then we do, right? I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, being in this position that, that uh, you know, where you have to make a decision. And, you know, you look at, uh, you know, the science that's 
been provided. You you take the feedback from uh, the planning commission. You take feedback from previous councils when they were making decisions, and 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 you you try and come up with something that you think is right. And um, you know, for me, it kind of gets down to that that one kind of like personal decision. You know, would would I feel comfortable saying no? You can't test on animals, and then you know, you know, then also perhaps denying someone the ability to use a drug to keep them from suffering or to save their life, right? And I, and I, I, I would, I wouldn't pass that on to my own family. I wouldn't pass that on to anybody in the community, and, 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 and no one in the world, right? I mean, that, that's where I, I, I come from in, in regards to this. When I look at the history over the last, I guess, you know, 12, 14 years, um, we've only had the one. And, um, you know, I, I think that the previous council back in 08, they worked really well with the community and they crafted language that seemed to find a balance. And it's worked well um, since then. Yes, we had a, a, an applicant come before us. And in the end, they, they pulled their application. Um, you know, in, in the end, I, I wish they wouldn't have, you know, I, I, to me, the discussion wasn't whether or not to allow it, but, you know, how we treat the animals, right? To me, if, if, if it's about doing the humane way, but to take away that ability to perhaps save someone's life, um, I, I, you know, in good conscience, I could not do that. Um, you know, there was the other reference from the planning commission in regards to um, the, if, if you take away the, the, you know, this right, then you, or a conditional right, um, then you, you potentially risk um, losing businesses in the biotech community coming to Brisbane. And um, in really, in the end, it, it, it should be the scientific community that, that works with um, government to come up with the right guidelines. And so um, I feel that what we have in place is good. I do like uh, the addition of some of the non-invertebrate um, options as well as reptiles. So, I would actually kind of I'd keep what we have in place and then just add some of those by right um, uh, animal groups uh, to the list. So that's where I stand. Okay, Council Member O'Connell. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to thank um, the subcommittee and staff for the work that they did on this. And I know it's not easy. And I know that it's, you know, got difficulties when you try to apply rules um, and craft them to protect everyone as best you can. Um, back in the day when this original ordinance was, the rules were put in place, I understand that the developer, and this was before they even had broken ground, um, was worried that they wouldn't be able to lease the property if they didn't have animal testing available. And even as a conditional use, it doesn't seem that they've had those issues. And if it means that certain businesses do not come to Brisbane, so be it. Maybe those businesses can be somewhere else. We don't need to be the, the end all and be all for every business. So um, I'm happy with the, the language that's been written. And I would like to 
for the issue of biological agents over, over level three, I would prefer to see um, that um, decision be left with the city council. I would prefer it to not be the planning commission, but I would not want to hold up this change to our, um, the proposed change to our regulations um, with that, if that would be a stumbling block. Thank you. Council member Mackin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think as a starting point, I would just underscore that I, I believe Brisbane is a progressive community and perceives itself that way. The obvious evidence of that is that this original ordinance was over 10 years ago and probably a lot of other communities didn't draft these type of ordinances. So I think that shows a community intent, whether at the time the existing ordinance was crafted, anyone even thought of mini pigs. I don't even think most people knew what mini pigs were. So I'm not surprised it was not included in that original draft. With regard to the federal legislation that was recently passed, I read a lot about that. I read about the event leading up to it. It was bipartisan legislation. It was led by Rand Paul, who is not known to be a progressive. I think that that told me something, which is that it's the direction the world is going in. I did some further research about what the trends are worldwide. Um, Council Member Cunningham mentioned efficacy of testing. We can debate that all night, but I did also read that so many animal studies now have shown that they're not conclusive, that a lot of times it ends up in human studies anyway. And that was part of the reason that this FDA changing legislation was passed. As far as the emotionalism in this, I'm not gonna make a decision on emotion. I'm gonna make a decision based on facts that I've read, what I think community intent is. A lot of things have been brought up. Um, again, Council Member O'Connell, you mentioned whether or not this is uh, deterrent to any potential lessees in our biotech community. And the conversations that I had last year, particularly with leasing agents at Sierra Point, we are absolutely the hottest leasing commodity right now. I do not see this ordinance impairing anything. Brisbane is really in demand. I even, I went through a bunch of online biotech newsletters and they're not talking about South San Francisco. They've all said Brisbane has now eclipsed South San Francisco. I would also just mention that if we compare to South San Francisco, for instance, in their ordinance, we are not South San Francisco. We could go around the Bay Area and maybe find all different kinds of things. What we're dealing with is what we want to do. We are not other communities. So personally, I believe that the change in this ordinance and also dovetailing off of the, the FDA and the direction that the country is going in, that the world is going in, I think it's time to go the way everyone else is gonna head. And I think a change in this ordinance would reflect that. I would also concur with Council Member O'Connell that um, bio agents over level four need to be addressed, not just assumed. I think it actually needs to be stated in our ordinance. So I would, I would make a motion to approve this ordinance. Thank you. Um, this is a really challenging topic to deliberate, I think, because nobody wants to 
co-sign the mistreatment of animals, so to speak. But I do feel that um, Brisbane is wanting to be a biotech hotspot. And when you want to attract that kind of business, then you also have to understand what comes along with that. And animal testing is a part of that. Um, I did have a discussion with Bristol Myers Squibb back when they applied, um, just because it's such a complicated issue. And so I had so many questions for them and they really walked me through exactly how they would have conducted their study. Um, they're not going to conduct that in Brisbane, obviously now, but they will still likely do that just in another facility in another state. Um, and what they told me about how the pigs would be treated made me more comfortable and more understanding with how this process works. They told me that um, with animal testing, it's rated with three different levels of pain for the animal. So level one is basically no pain at all, maybe just like an injection or just like drawing blood here or there. It's mostly observation. That's like a level one type um, study. And level two is where the animal experiences some moderate pain, but pain medicine is administered. And then a lot that would be the study that they would conduct. And then a level three is where you intentionally invoke pain on the animal and no um, remedy is provided. So I think what I would do is look at our animal testing and maybe put more um, put more controls around let's say outlaw a level three type um, test. And then I also, um, I'm in favor of removing rabbits as a by right animal. I do think that they are companion animals, um, which was the intent behind not having cats and dogs. But I think ultimately we're likely too far apart anyway for these suggestions to make us all happy. Um, I appreciate where our country is going. And I hope that, you know, companies like Bristol Myers Squibb would decide not to do animal testing because now they aren't required to. But I believe in giving businesses discretion, which is what our country is saying, what's what our country is offering. They're giving that discretion for these biotech companies to determine whether they feel animal testing is needed. Right now, our ordinance essentially gives some discretion to businesses. I recognize that the outreach that was done is in line with probably the steps that we always take, but I, I really think that because we are trying to attract all of these businesses to Brisbane and because there are so many um, spaces that have been leased, but people haven't fully moved in. I think that we really should have been more hands on with communicating with them what we what we're proposing here, and we should have really sought feedback from the businesses that were impacting. I I wouldn't feel comfortable moving forward with this change unless more of those companies, like no one came to the table at all. At least I would like to hear them say, I would think Bristol Myers would say something, right? I would at least want to hear from the businesses that we have in Brisbane and have them say, hey, you know, now that this has passed, we were, this, this doesn't affect us because we're no longer intending on doing animal testing. So if you guys want to make this change, that's totally fine for us. But we're just missing a key component of feedback from the stakeholders that this impacts. And I'd love to, I'd love to say, no, we don't need animal testing and let's just get rid of it. But we're impacting a whole collection of businesses and I haven't heard from a single one of them. 
So I couldn't move forward with this as written, what's suggested. So are, are, you, are you trying to make a suggestion then, Madison, that perhaps um, we're making a decision without receiving the full breadth of, of information to, you know, to move this forward and that perhaps, you know, doing additional outreach in, in more than just sending a letter in the mail. Totally. Um, so that we can get that feedback so that then we as a council can provide a, a, a more in-depth and I, I think in, in, you know, intelligent, you know, uh, decision. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would hope that like Mitch Bull, for example, would maybe go personally to businesses or reach out to them with a personal email or phone call. I hope that would have happened at the subcommittee level to drive the recommendations here to make sure that we're weighing all sides of an issue. Um, but I, I want to hear from, I want to hear from our businesses. And I did take the time to meet with Bristol Meyer Squibb and what they told me, it didn't make me ecstatic about mini pig testing, but I understood it to the point that I was okay with moving forward with their application. And we, that never occurred at the council level, but I think that we're missing critical information here from, from our businesses directly. You know, also, um, I mean, there isn't anyone, there isn't any company before us who is seeking a conditional approval for animal testing. So uh, it, it, I think it behooves us for us as a, as a, you know, as the, as the main decision making body of our city to get that information. And then if, if the, if representatives from uh, our business community out at zero point say, you know, we don't have any issues with this, then okay. You know, but if they do, then I think we really need to evaluate that. And we're, and we're not getting that bit of information, which makes it, I think, um, it makes it difficult, right, to, to, to put forth a sound decision. Yes, you know, Congress did pass that act, but that's just to give these, these companies just another option for testing. It doesn't mean, oh, that this is the way to go, and, and, and now you don't need to animal test anymore. It just provides another option, another layer of testing that, you know, ultimately is, is about providing safe drugs to the marketplace. So. Okay, I'll, I'll add wait, to wait, that. Wait, wait, hold on. We have a we have a hand raised from um, Councilmember O'Connell. Been raised for a couple of minutes, and then I'll take you next. Thank you. Um, so this question is really for staff. If we pass these changes tonight, is there a waiting period or a comment period or a second reading, or would they go into effect immediately? Um, um, my video is not working at the moment, but the answer is there would be a second reading on this and it would go into effect 30 days thereafter. Thank you. Um, with that, I would want to make a motion to reject. Karen wants to say something. Karen okay. wants to say something. Hold on. Then I'll take your motion. I just want to bring back to your attention. Take all the emotion out of it. Forget what's going on here. If the pharmaceutical companies and the biotech companies hated this, they would have lobbied the Congress and the Senate, and they did not. Well, why would you lobby against having more freedom? Like, why would you get a lobby against having discretion? I don't think you would. They would have stopped this going through, is what I'm saying. They, if, they, if they really didn't want this change, they would have stopped it. But, okay. All right, Terry, are you going to make a motion? Yes, I would like to make a motion to reject the Planning Commission uh, recommendation and adopt as proposed. I'll second that. City Clerk, roll call vote, please. please through, the, through the mayor, can I just have one clarification? I believe uh, Council Member O'Connell had mentioned moving 
risk three use permits back to city council review and approval? Is that part of your motion? I would like to do that, but if this is going to prolong this discussion. You can make that change this evening. Okay. Um, I would like to, I, I'll amend my motion to reject the planning commission decision and adopt the um, ordinance as proposed, moving the decision-making for biological agents level three and above to the uh, city council level. I'll still second that. Council member Cunningham? Aye. Council member Lentz? Yeah. Council member Mackin? Aye. Council member O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Davis? No. We'll now move on to. You know, if we just, just a second, I just, I, you know, you, you brought up a good point, and I just want to make sure that that. Um, is addressed by staff so that we will have uh, our economic director, uh, Mitch Bull, reach out to uh, the um, the biotech companies at Sierra Point to solicit their feedback and, and provide a little bit more robust outreach to them so that um, we can get their comments for the second reading when it comes back before the council. If that's the uh, direction from the council, yes. Okay. Uh, well, it seemed like that that was um, okay to do that. Not, I think, Terry, that's why you then move forward with uh, the motion. There, well, because there is the second reading and there will be a 30 day <coughs> enactment period. I do think that that gives staff time to go ahead and make sure there is no underlying issues that are currently on the table and moving forward you know, at, at that point, um, when we go to the second reading, we can certainly, if there is things to discuss, we certainly can. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm not hearing anybody say no, so we'll, we will have uh, that outreach. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, new business item G, consider approval of First Amendment to lease, pro lease <laughs> for property at 25 Park Place, Brisbane, California. Approval of the First Amendment is exempt from further review under the California Environmental Quality Act because it's not a project. Section 15378B, CEQA guidelines. Staff report, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, City Council. Um, tonight, we have an extension of the lease at 25 Park Place that would go through December 31st of 2046. Uh, the purpose of this is uh, to uh, facilitate the um, funding for a um, approximately four and a half to $5 million tenant improvement that we would be doing, um, we need to have the extension of the lease to be able to uh, borrow the money in um, over um, uh, a period of time that uh, we have the lease. Um, the lease itself would be uh, at a 3% annual increase um, with a potential um, reset in 2034, um, depending on market conditions. Uh, we've outlined those conditions in the, the staff report. Um, while history would suggest that that reset would not be um, uh, put in play, um, it's a possibility that the, and it's a protection that the, uh, the property owner wanted to, uh, to have. Um, not in the staff report, but just in terms of next steps, if, assuming you approve this tonight, we will move forward with um, bringing to the uh, infrastructure subcommittee the um, uh, plans for the remodel. Um, and then from there, we'll have a, a notice of bid that would come to the city council to start the process for um, a construction contract. We'll also be working with our financial advisor on the uh, financing for the, uh, for the improvements. And we'll bring that to your administrative services subcommittee and then with a recommendation to the, to the full city council. So those are the next two steps. Um, if all goes well, um, we hope to be under construction sometime uh, this summer. Um, and, um, I um, um, like to joke with staff that uh, my goal is to uh, move in on Monday and move out on Friday. So we're, we're gonna try to do this as fast as we can and get, the, get this in place. Okay, do we have council questions? I have none. Oh, I'm seeing a hand from council member O'Connell. 
oh good, you saw me waving in the distance. Yes. Um, so when we first leased this property, um, did we have an idea of what kind of budget for renovation that would be? Um, we had some ideas. We knew there was going to be extensive. Uh, the building was um, needing a lot of um, upgrades, um, you know, electrical, HVAC, everything, and, and as well as just the uh, getting it ready for the uh, office operation that we were going to have. There was quite different use in there. Um, I don't know that we had any specific budget because we just didn't have enough information to put that together at that time. Okay. Okay. Um, that's my only question right at the moment. Thank you. Councilmember Lentz? I don't have any at this time. Councilmember Mackin? Did I call any questions? Thank you. Did I call on you already, Councilmember Kenny? Yeah. No, I have no okay. questions. Thanks. I don't have any questions either. So we will move to public comments. You want to take a motion? <laughs> no, no, I have to do there, public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. There are no public comments at this time, Madam Mayor. Oh, okay. Now we'll move to council discussion. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make that motion that we uh, consider approval of the first amendment to lease for property at 25 Park Place, Brisbane, California. I'll second that. Council Member Cunningham? Aye. Council Member Lentz? Aye. Council Member Mackin? Aye. Council Member O'Connell? Aye. And Mayor Davis? Aye. Okay, we'll now move to staff reports. City managers report on upcoming activities. I have no report tonight. Fantastic. Mayor Council Matters? Countywide assignments and subcommittee reports. Can I do economic development? Yeah, sure, absolutely. What a fabulous meeting that was. Um, I, I actually asked for Mitch's notes to be printed out because he had good news after good news after good news. And dang, did we need some good news, right? Absolutely. So um, the, the Genesis Marina building, which won't even be completed till September, has just one um, project is being lead gold standard and has been pre-certified as the world's first true construction site. And it's T-R-U-E, if you wanna look it up. The certification by the Green Business Certification uh, certifies that over 90% of construction waste at this site from the construction of this building uh, and site is used for other uses and not diverted to landfills and incineration. That was truly amazing to me. And a, a piece of information certainly worth sharing. Um, we also have two of the three buildings completely pre-leased already. And then there was just more great news after great news about um, our EV battery company doing a um, great job here. Yeah, it was, it was a really wonderful meeting and we discussed some other issues moving forward about um, potential rezoning and things like that. So that was very exciting. Yeah, no, I think you captured it all. Great. I think that was the only thing for city subcommittees. Did anyone have any county meetings they'd like to report out on? You know, I had a commute.org uh, meeting this morning and um, we, we, they, they, did a, um, uh, they did a presentation, uh, well, um, the uh, Express Lane folks uh, did a presentation on how the Express Lane operation is, is providing community benefits for folks um, who are in uh, underserved areas. So you would think, okay, wait a minute, how, how does that serve, you know, under, underserved folks? But, you know, uh, it's a money revenue um, operation. And so a lot of that money or some of that money is going towards uh, providing, um, uh, you know, clip of cards for folks in underserved areas, um, creating uh, better local transit for some folks. Um, in their areas. And so, um, you know, they, they didn't say when the 
the uh, express lane will be in in operation. I mean, granted, we can drive on it, but it's not uh, in service where you would, um, you know, you you you'd have to pay if you were a single occupant driver. But um, Karen, maybe you have some info on that since you're on CCAG when when that's going to be fully operational. Hmm. Okay. It says tolling starts soon. Yeah. That just showed up. It, it did. Yeah, I saw that. I, the, the I, I think there's so. a lot, especially after the storms, there was some underlying issues on all of the freeway. And as we well know, potholes all over the place. So I think every single thing that we had planned in our city and everywhere else is kind of a little behind schedule as a result of storm damage. So hmm, is my answer. Okay. All right. All right, that's it. Anyone else? Madam Mayor, I have a report. Okay. Um, as you know, I'm the uh, board representative on Peninsula Clean Energy. And additionally, now I'm working with the Citizens Advisory Committee of Peninsula Clean Energy. And um, the Citizens <laughs> Advisory Committee, they provide suggestions to the board. They work and help further the mission of Peninsula Clean Energy. and um, there's going to be a lot more community outreach because as you probably all know, there's a, a big push for electrification. It's caused a lot of confusion on the part of many Peninsula Clean Energy customers not knowing what they can feasibly afford, how to go about doing it. And so that's kind of a, a new direction, which is uh, there'll be more outreach in, in giving people the nuts and bolts. And, and probably I would characterize it as a lot more handholding to make this a little bit easier. Um, and there's additionally, there's two openings right now on the Citizens Advisory Committee. So I would just suggest if there's anyone in Brisbane who has an interest in this and climate change, decarbonization, uh, go to the Peninsula Clean Energy website. I think it might be posted now the application if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to written communications. Madam Mayor, we received written correspondence from Jeffrey Tong on the 16th, why we need a dedicated 101 380 bike and ped overpass. Dana Dilworth, 215, animal testing on uh, city Council meeting on February 16th. Brenda Moreno received on this uh, February 7th gun safety safe storage ordinance in Brisbane. Thank you. We'll now move on to oral communications number two. I have two slips at this time. Kim Feline is first. We will do two minutes. Um, good evening again, City Council, Kim Foleen, Brisbane resident. I just wanted to follow up on your discussion on the animal testing. Um, it's a total political win Amen. for any anybody. Wait, what? Pause. What? Um, someone was saying something. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, this is, not, this is uh, for items that are not on the agenda. Okay, so I can't talk. So Wait, wait, let's... Attorney, can you, city attorney, can you weigh in? Hold on, we'll start your yeah, time over. It. Sure, video is still not working. The, uh, the the question here is whether or not, it uh, seems like this is an item that could be addressed here under oral communication. The, the agenda has been, or the agenda item has been heard. Uh, I think giving the speaker uh, two minutes to talk about something that comes out of it, I think is in, is in order. Okay, so city clerk, will you restart the time, please? Hold on, just wait until your Let me know. <laughs> timer is restarted. Okay, you can start. So I just wanted to follow up on the fact that one council member made the point this is bipartisan. Um, it's a total political win. It's an easy, easy win for any congressman Senate to, to um, advocate for that. Um, I support that act as well. Um, all of biotech supports it because it's a huge economic benefit to the pharmaceutical industry if they can uh, uh, not do animal testing. But the fact is, and is that it's still required that these um, 
these synthetic models, computer modeling, doesn't give you all the data you need to ensure a safe human drug. Um, and I would just encourage you in your comment period, if you're going to reach out um, to the businesses, to please reach out to actual scientists. You have one on your planning commission that is a drug development scientist, and he has a lot of great information. You might take the time to listen to that meeting if you didn't, and listen to what he has to say about the act and the reality of implementing that act. Yes, the country is going in the direction of no animal testing. I think I don't think there's anyone on the planet that doesn't support that, but we're not there yet. And unfortunately, even to get there, it's still gonna require more animal testing to make those models more accurate. So, um, and just one last thing, pigs are an accurate human or an accurate model for the human heart. Go ask any scientist. So that that's all I have, thanks. Thank you. And our next speaker is Michael Barnes. We'll restart the timer at two minutes. Michael Barnes, Brisbane resident. The changes to the Sierra Point animal testing ordinance did not come from the community. These changes are being imposed on the community and the local industry by the council. You originated this ban on animal testing. You have in fact ignored the community. I have over 40 years of experience in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry. And the last 25 years I spent in research. Your planning commission has a clinician and a medical doctor and you rejected their informed advice. This town is full of professionals in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry. Everyone in the drug industry looks forward to replacing animals with computer modeling and in vitro testing. As I stated earlier, I have developed both biochemical and cell-based assays. Your decision was not based on science. It was based on a wish to be politically correct. The federal leg legislation does not ban animal testing, but what you did tonight is a ban on animal testing. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at this time, City Clerk? I see no raised hands, Madam Mayor. Okay. So we will now adjourn the meeting at 8.56. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.